stream of particles coming out of the uh, Soyuz MS-22 vehicle that is attached to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. We do not know what the source of this uh, stream of particles is at the point. At this point, uh, there is uh, discussions that are ongoing. Uh, first, uh, to make sure that the safety of the two spacewalkers is not compromised in any way, and then uh, to determine uh, what impact, if any, this might have on the integrity of that Soyuz vehicle. This is Mission Control Houston, and to illustrate uh, what, we, what we have just uh, been discussing, this is uh, the uh, Soyuz MS-22 vehicle that is docked uh, to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. And this is uh, the issue that's under discussion right now here in Mission Control and on the loops with uh, the Russian uh, shift flight director and other Russian specialists as to what may be causing this stream of particles that appears to be coming from uh, the area of the uh, instrumentation and propulsion module of the Soyuz MS-22. Moscow, that's for step 6.4. I am not seeing any video. And we copy. You do not need to put step seven in work as of yet. Copy. And Anna, could we please switch to space to ground one? Copy.
This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking uh, at a close-up view of the area of the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft uh, that uh, began uh, streaming particles of what could be a coolant fluid that began about 45 minutes or so ago. This all happening while uh, Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin were in the uh, airlock, the Poisk module airlock on the opposite side. This Soyuz, which brought Frank Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin to the station back in September, is docked to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. The uh, Soyuz, uh, again, is attached to the Earth-facing side to the Rosviet module where it docked back in September. And about 45 minutes ago, we began uh, to see a stream of particles coming from the area of the instrumentation and propulsion module of this vehicle as uh, Prokopiev and Patelin had completed uh, the donning of their Orlon spacesuits in preparation for the spacewalk that they uh, are preparing to conduct outside of the uh, Poisk airlock to uh, support the movement of a heat dissipating radiator from uh, the Rosviet module over to the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. The actual movement of the radiator would be supported uh, from inside the station by cosmonaut Anna Kikina operating the European robotic arm while uh, Prokopiev and Patelin uh, disconnect a number of cables monitor the relocation of that radiator, and then hook up mechanical and hydraulic connections for the radiator to Naoka. Now, what impact uh, this uh, apparent uh, leak or stream of particles from the Soyuz uh, MS-22 might have on tonight's spacewalk, not yet known. We are uh, in discussions with the Russians as we speak to determine uh, whether or not there will be any impact to the spacewalk itself. Moscow station on space to ground. Two for Sergei Dmitry. And go ahead. Guys, external SOTR loop for the Soyuz is leaking. We are currently analyzing the situation and looking into the telemetry. You just heard a conversation between Russian flight controllers and Karlyov at the Russian Mission Control Center. And uh, the two cosmonauts, Sergei Prokopiev, the Expedition 68 commander, and Dmitry Patelin, who are suited up in their Orlon suits inside uh, the airlock in the Poisk module of the International Space Station. They were informed uh, that uh, the Russian flight control team is monitoring uh, the leak that you're looking at right now that appears to be coming from the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft that is docked to the, assess the current uh, situation with the uh, Soyuz spacecraft. This is the spacecraft that brought uh, Prokopiev, Patelin, and Frank Rubio to the station back in September. The um, other Russian cosmonaut who is uh, on board the station, Anna Kikina, launched on the uh, SpaceX Crew Dragon, along with uh, Nicole Mann, Josh Cassida, and Koichi Wakata.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, what you're looking at uh, are more particles uh, that are coming from the Soyuz MS-22 vehicle at the International Space Station, docked to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. The uh, About two hours and 40 minutes ago, the uh, crew members of Expedition 68 in any danger, and you can see that uh, the uh, leak uh, continues. Uh, from uh, the area of the instrumentation and propulsion module on the Soyuz MS-22. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you're continuing to uh, take a look at particles leaking from the uh, Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft docked to the Rosviet module of the International Space Station. This leak uh, was first observed about uh, two hours and 45 minutes ago, around 6.45 p.m. Central Time, at the time at which Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin were uh, preparing uh, to begin a spacewalk to uh, move uh, outside of the Poisk airlock of the station, a spacewalk designed uh, to move a radiator from the Rosviet module to the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. This leak or stream of particles from the area of the instrumentation and propulsion module was associated with uh, a uh, drop in pressure data, taking a careful look at uh, video that is being sent to them from here in Mission Control. While we stand by and uh, wait for further word, in the meantime, Prokopiev and Patelin safely back inside the International Space Station. They were never in any danger in the airlock, in the Poisk airlock mo uh, of the station. Preparing for their spacewalk, they're now out of their Orlon spacesuits, awaiting further word on uh, what the next course of action will be. This is the Soyuz vehicle that was launched back in September to carry Prokopiev, the Soyuz commander, and now Expedition 68 commander, Patelin and NASA's Frank Rubio to the station, launching from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Station space to ground one for Dmitry. Good job, it was a good one. 
I opened four twenty one. And so I'm supposed to do a suit activation and the pressure sensor has been completed. Copy that. Steps two, four, and six through eleven. Dmitry, and DSD, we put 690. And Dmitry, the pressure sensors should be in uh, at 690. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, once again, uh, it has been uh, just about uh, three hours now since we first observed uh, what you're seeing on the screen, that being uh, a leak of uh, particles, presumably from a cooling loop on the uh, Soyuz MS-22 at the Rosviet module of the International Space Station that forced a cancellation of tonight's spacewalk by uh, Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin. The uh, leak uh, of the uh, fluid uh, that you're seeing uh, in the form of uh, snowflake-like particles apparently coming from uh, a cooling loop on the Soyuz. Not clear at this point uh, from the Russian specialists as to what impact, if any, this might have on the performance or the integrity of the Soyuz spacecraft. The uh, Two uh, spacewalkers for tonight, uh, Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin, who along with Frank Rubio of NASA, launched on this Soyuz vehicle 
uh, back in September from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Prokopiev and Patelin were suited up inside the Poisk airlock on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. And um, they were uh, depressurizing uh, the Poisk airlock down to vacuum to begin a spacewalk uh, to move a radiator along with the assistance of Anna Kikina, the uh, European robotic arm operator inside the Russian segment of the station. That radiator was to have moved uh, from uh, the Rosviet module to the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. The uh, Russian uh, managers uh, met at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov outside of Moscow and determined uh, that tonight's spacewalk would have to be canceled that uh, word was radioed up to uh, the two spacewalkers and the rest of the crew on board the station. And uh, with the cancellation of the spacewalk, the Poisk airlock was repressurized. Prokopiev and Patelin uh, climbed out of their Orlon spacesuits. They're back inside the station. All of the uh, European, uh, all of the uh, Expedition 68 crew members uh, were never in any danger during uh, the course of tonight's activity. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you're continuing uh, to watch uh, live video from the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft that began uh, leaking uh, from a coolant loop, it is believed, about three hours ago. 
at the time at which Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin were in the process of preparing for a spacewalk this evening that ultimately was canceled. It uh, is believed that this leak is coming uh, from the area of the instrumentation and propulsion module at the aft end of the Soyuz. The exact location of this leak not yet specifically pinpointed and discussions are ongoing uh, as to uh, what the future course of action might be with this vehicle and what approach uh, the Russian specialists will take in uh, analyzing the data and making a uh, determination in concert uh, with International Space Station management as to what uh, may be the end result of this leak that you're seeing that again began about three hours ago, about 6.45 p.m. Central Time, uh, as uh, Prokopiev and Patelin were inside the airlock of the Poisk module of the International Space Station preparing for a spacewalk that eventually was canceled. They are back inside uh, the station. Uh, the Expedition 68 crew is in great shape, at no time in any danger. While uh, further discussions are ongoing uh, with specialists and engineers, as uh, to the next course of action. Inaudible.
МКС Суд Москвы в канале СГ-2 для Дмитрия по проведению Go ahead on space to ground. I can see you are still in the process of uh, doing step 4, decimal 21. Well, I just have to put the pressure gauges back in place. Yes, and also you need to switch your alarm system from EVA support panel to PSS caution and warning panel and the inaudible. We switched the caution and warning system back to PSS. We had the audible signal and I acknowledged it. Copy and thank you. Now reactivate the поток in SM and MLM. Yes, the talk in the service module. And this is per step one of RODF for atmosphere system. Step seven, decimal two, decimal one. I copied and reactivate воздух in mode four, BVK two and three valves and atmosphere purification system cycle 20 minutes, vacuum pump system cycle one minute, airflow rate 100 percent. And what did you say after atmosphere purification system, vacuum pump cycle, one minute airflow rate, uh, 100%. And then press the operation button, работа. Copy. Бортовая SOX SM, пункт. And this is per atmosphere system SOGS SM, step 3, decimal 2. 
уже фиксировал. Дальше проверить исходное состояние электронным МЛМ и чек электрон in MLM and repress the liquid unit Bege and this is the SOX RODF. Step three decimal two, paragraph three decimal two. Step two. And for repress, this is paragraph three decimal six. Copy in work. And uh, this is it for now, I think. Copy. Will do. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just joining us, expecting to see a spacewalk by uh, Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin, that uh, was canceled uh, just about an hour and 15 minutes ago because of this uh, leak of coolant from a cooling loop on the Soyuz MS-22 that you're seeing here in this view. This leak uh, was first observed about 6.45 p.m. Central Time this evening while uh, Prokopiev and Patelin were inside the airlock on the, in the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station, preparing, they were suited up in their Orlan suits, ready to go outside uh, to begin a spacewalk that had originally been postponed three weeks ago because of cooling pump issues on both of their Orlan spacesuits. Those pumps were replaced, the suits were checked out, and everything was in readiness for the spacewalk tonight that would have seen Prokopiev and Patelin work uh, in concert with uh, cosmonaut Anna Kikina of Roscosmos, uh, who was uh, to have operated uh, the European robotic arm to uh, move a radiator from the Rosviet module to the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module for its installation on Naoka. With the uh, stream of uh, coolant particles coming out of uh, the aft area of the Soyuz MS-22, Russian managers met and determined uh, that they would have to cancel the spacewalk tonight while they uh, began uh, further discussions on the next course of action uh, determining the integrity of the Soyuz MS-22. This is the spacecraft that brought uh, Prokopiev, Patelin, and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio to the... Tomorrow, it's the same step for decimal 21. We need to install the protective covers on the flat surface of the PHO hatch and the PHO SU. Uh, for radiogram 3126. Okay, yes, I understand. Copy.
This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking at a view of the uh, extended European robotic arm, which is uh, affixed to the uh, Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. 
extended uh, in the direction of the Soyuz MS-22 that is docked to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. That uh, European robotic arm was to have moved a radiator from uh, Rosviet to Naoka for its installation during tonight's spacewalk by uh, Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin, but that spacewalk was canceled a few hours ago following uh, the detection of a coolant leak from the Soyuz MS-22 that began about 6.45 p.m. Central Time this evening. Russian uh, managers and uh, flight controllers are working uh, right now to assess uh, data that they've been observing and uh, determine uh, the next uh, course of action uh, in concert uh, with NASA managers and International Space Station managers uh, in the wake of uh, this coolant uh, leak uh, that uh, propagated itself about 6.45 p.m. Central Time this evening. Uh, this is Mission Control Houston. Uh, the, uh, again, this view of the uh, extended uh, European robotic arm. Uh, Anna Kikina is at the controls of the arm from a workstation inside the Russian segment of the station. And the arm at the moment, which was originally to have uh, moved a radiator from Rosvia to Naoka uh, for tonight's spacewalk by Prokopiev and Patelin, now uh, becomes a surveyor. It is being used uh, to uh, do a uh, inspection of the Soyuz MS-22 to try to gather more data for Russian managers as to what uh, may have caused uh, the leak that uh, caused a, um, the propagation of uh, snowflake-like uh, particles from uh, the aft section of the Soyuz that began about 6.45 p.m. this evening. So that's what you're seeing, uh, the arm uh, in motion at the moment uh, towards its, its extended uh, position of about 37 feet in length, conducting a uh, survey of the Soyuz MS-22.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, just to recap uh, where we're at here this evening, you're looking at uh, a view of the uh, extended European robotic arm, uh, having been extended by uh, cosmonaut Anna Kikina from a workstation inside the Russian segment of the International Space Station. The uh, arm, which is attached uh, to the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module, was to have been used this evening during a spacewalk by Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin to uh, transfer a radiator stowed on the outside of the Rosviet module to the multipurpose laboratory module, the Naoka. Prokopiev and Patelin were suited up in their Orlon suits in the Poisk module airlock. They had uh, actually begun to depressure.
But at 6.45 p.m. Central Time this evening, it was uh, detected that a uh, fairly uh, significant leak of coolant was uh, coming from the aft end near the instrumentation and propulsion module of the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft that you see on the right side of your screen, which is docked to the Rosviet module on the uh, Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. The cause of that coolant leak unknown and the effect at this point unknown as Russian managers continue to uh, look over the data and uh, consult with uh, both NASA managers and engineers and International Space Station uh, partner uh, individuals about the next course of action. No decisions have been made regarding uh, the integrity of the Soyuz MS-22 or uh, what the next course of action will be. We're going to wrap up our coverage for this evening, but uh, we can assure you that we will keep you updated with information as it becomes available, as soon as it becomes available, and as warranted uh, throughout uh, the course of the night and into the morning tomorrow when uh, more information might be available. So again, uh, we are continuing uh, to work in concert with uh, Russian managers and engineers regarding uh, determining what uh, may have caused uh, a coolant leak on the Soyuz MS-22 vehicle on the right side of your screen that was uh, the launch vehicle for Sergei Prokopiev, Dmitry Patelin, and Frank Rubio back in September. Uh, no decisions on the next course of action have been made, but again, we will keep you updated every step of the way as more information becomes available. For now, we'll wrap up our coverage. All the crew members of Expedition 68 safely inside the International Space Station. They were never in any danger. And uh, again, we'll keep you updated as soon as we have additional information. In the meantime, this is Mission Control Houston.